Good morning. Hello, I'm John Goad. Today we'd like to tell you about an interesting project we've been working on. Helping a small railroad town in East Tennessee, Irwin and its surrounding communities, document its oral history and promote sustainable development. As members of East Tennessee State University's 2014 Appalachian Teaching Project, we've partnered with the Joint Economic Development Board of Unicoi County, the Unicoi County Heritage Museum, and the Clinchfield Railroad Museum to launch a project designed to help document oral history for the purpose of promoting cultural heritage tourism. Our community partners, which also include the local historical society and heritage museum, have all identified and proposed that a project promoting railroad history is priority. And they've asked for assistance in doing so. We have two main goals. First, to conduct ethnographic field research of Clinchfield history interviewing residents with a connection to the railroad and area. Secondly, to work with community leaders to develop a five-year plan to promote railroad history, including sustainable development through this aspect of tourism. Along the way, we spent many hours analyzing related materials from within the Clinchfield collection housed within the Archives of Appalachia at East Tennessee State University. We're lucky and very fortunate that it happens to contain almost the entirety of Clinchfield Railroad Company records. We've worked together collectively to interview 12 people and transcribe 15 hours of interviews. We have analyzed our findings, which we hope to present to you all today. My colleagues include Maria Lovelady, Kat Washell, Chris Sharp, Emily Booker, Wayne Lester, and lastly, but certainly not least, Chad Bailey. Our community partners chose this project because the Clinchfield Railroad has been and remains an integral part of the town of Irwin for most of its existence. The Clinchfield Railroad was one of the most important regional railroads in Appalachia, and at its height it ran more than 200 miles from Elkhorn City, Kentucky to Spartanburg, South Carolina. Irwin is located in Unicoi County, Tennessee, on the North Carolina state line between the cities of Johnson City Tennessee and Asheville, North Carolina. Irwin's population today is approximately 6,000. Through our research at the Archives of Appalachia, we have found that the history of Irwin in Unicoi County, Tennessee began in 1875, but by 1886 the Charleston, Cincinnati, and Chicago Railway had begun to lay track in Unicoi County. This railway changed hands from 1886 to 1908 three times, but by 1908, the Carolina Clinchfield and Ohio Railroad, or the CCNO shortened to the Clinchfield, has found its home in East Tennessee, being bought by George L. Carter. Carter was a prominent wealthy entrepreneur who also donated the land for East Tennessee State University. Carter's prime motive in forming the Clinchfield was for easy transportation of coal from the coal fields of southern Appalachia to the Carolina Piedmont and then to seaports. In 1926, the CCNO headquarters had been moved to Irwin and plans of a town had shaped around it. By 1982, the Clinchfield had changed hands again, first to family lines and then to seaport, now CXX Transportation. Today, the CCNO is operated under the CSX Corporation and still has one of its main rail lines in Irwin. Hey, everybody. As part of our project, um, we interviewed some amazing people in this town, and we were able to identify six recurring themes. Um, the first theme is community and economic development. Um, the railroad company had a significant impact on the Irwin community and in the economy of the town. The Clinchfield was not only by far the largest employer in the town, but the Clinchfield um, in large developed the town. For example, the railroad laid out the plans for the water and the electric plants and sponsored the construction of a school, hospitals, roads, and homes. Um, part of this development was due to the fact that many of the executives on the trustees board were locals who had a deep interest um, in the future and the economy of the town. One of our interviews, um, ja Jaquita Edwards said, the town of Erwin would have been here if it wasn't for the railroad. Our second team is um, home and family life. The home of the families of those who work on the railroad uh, was marked by several common characteristics. 
uh, such as the many generations that work in the railroad. Ja Jaquita Edwards said that currently my son is a fifth generation railroaded. We also found that the, because of many men were gone because of work, the women were forced to organize themselves to help each other and to take care of basically everything that was going on at home just by themselves. Family time was also hard to accommodate for the families. For example, since they didn't have holidays off, families were forced to celebrate holidays and other important dates at times that were convenient to them. As Jaquita Edwards recalled, sometimes they will come and wake me up in the middle of the night and said, Santa came, hurry up. And while I was opening gifts or whatever, mom was packing that his lunch to get him to work. It was also common that the majority of the community activities were planned around the railroad schedules and support, such as community gatherings, sports activities, picnics, and holiday celebrations. The third theme that emerged from our interviews was danger and railroad safety. Many of our interviewees emphasized the dangers of working on the railroad. Men were injured or killed building and operating the railroad, which covered some of the most rugged terrain in the eastern U.S. George Osborne, a conductor for the Clinchfield and the CSX, counted 10 men he knew that died on the job. Railroad employees worked long shifts, sometimes staying up 26 hours without any sleep. They did whatever they could to stay awake and alert because they knew that letting exhaustion get the best of them could lead to being fired or worse, death and injury. Although the Clinchfield was constructed to high standards at the time it was built, lack of trap upkeep led to many car derailments. Later on, speed limits were enforced and rails were better maintained and the amount of derailments decreased. Work conditions also improved. Employees were allowed to work a maximum of 12 hours and needed 8 hours of rest. The downside of the increased regulations and the emphasis on safety was the added stress on the employees. There was a lot of pressure to do things by the books, and if accidents did happen, employees were heavily penalized. The fourth theme that was prominent in our interviews was a merger with CSX railroads. When the Clinchfield was acquired by the CXS, many of our interviewees stressed the loss of community engagement and compared the loss of the Clinchfield to a loss of family. When the Clinchfield merged with the CSX, headquarters moved from Irwin, Tennessee to Jacksonville, Florida. And although some railroad employees were able to continue their work in Irwin, many others either moved to Jacksonville or lost their jobs. The work family was broken apart and replaced with a company that no longer had ties to the community. Headquarters was now a great distance away from Irwin, and according to Charlie King, a lineman of 45 years, employees sometimes felt like they were just a number. The Clinchfield was involved in the community in so many ways that when the company merged with the CSX, it seemed like the railroad had abandoned the town. Still, the merge with CSX did bring about some good. Many safety regulations and changes came with the CSX consolidation. In addition, the CSX remains a major employer in the area. Throughout our research, we have come to one conclusion about working on the railroad, and Charlie King says it perfectly. The Clinchfield was like one big family, which is our fifth theme. This created the sense that the Clinchfield, which was Irwin's major employer at the time, was more of a small town, had a more small town feel to it, and were someplace where everybody knew each other. This feeling began for most before they even stepped into the office looking for a job. Ed Griffin, who was an electrician on the railroad, explained it this way. You'd go into the office when you put into an application. It was mostly people you grew up with, uncles, nephews, cousins, and a lot of brothers worked together, as well as fathers and, fathers and sons. Excuse me. The familial ties to the railroad, we believe, stems directly with the upper management. Dot Ballou, whose father, Leslie Beals, who was general manager during the 50s, said that, one during, said that during one major national union strike uh, seeking for better workers' rights, the Clinchfield had already given those rights to their employees. During Mr. Beals' funeral, the minister told those in attendance that Mr. Beals worried about you a lot. The sixth theme that we found concerns the iconic trains and the excursions that they ran, which are deeply cherished by the living workers and community of the Clinchfield Railroad. The Clinchfield No. 1, which was a steam engine, found abandoned in 1968 and subsequently restored 
is held dearest to their hearts. Now sitting in the Baltimore Railroad Museum, the number one was a train that ran all the special excursions or passenger trains. Alf Peoples, who was an engineer on the number one and who has worked with us closely, had this to say. It belongs in Irwin. That's where it became famous. Although dear to their hearts, although dear to their hearts, more famous than the number one is the Santa train, which continues to be a part of the CSX today and still runs on certain, I'm sorry, on certain segments of Clinchfield and brings presents to children all along the line. Velma Howard, whose brother was the last general manager of the Clinchfield, said that the Santa Claus train is everyone's favorite memory and it was such an inter interesting experience to see everyone lined up along the tracks. Patty Loveless, a Grammy Award winning country music singer and uh, born and raised in Elkhorn City, Kentucky, even wrote a song on the Clinchfield Santa train entitled, surprisingly, Santa Train. As stated, the goals of our project were to work with our community partners in Irwin and Unicoi County and to not only conduct field research, but to assist them in a strategic plan for utilizing their local history to promote sustainable development. Cultural heritage tourism is a major part of the county's plan to improve their economy. The people of the community are proud of their railroad routes and have been eager to help us with this project. Some steps have already been taken to increase the role of railroad history in Unicoi County's cultural tourism efforts. Martha Irwin spearheaded the creation of a railroad museum honoring Clinchfield's history in Irwin. Martha, along with members of the Railroad Society of Unicoi County, held fundraisers and opened the museum in 2011. After seeing the new building, many of the railroaders donated personal items to the museum. The Downtown Merchants Association of Irwin and the Unicoi County Joint Economic Board are working on a downtown revitalization of Irwin. This includes the preservation of the 1925 depot, which currently serves as the town library. In one example of using railroad history to promote tourism, this weekend Irwin is hosting Clinchfield Christmas downtown. This event grew out of interest with our oral history project and through the meetings with our community partners. The Downtown Merchants Association is hosting events throughout the weekend to promote the town's railroad past. There will also be time for former employees of the Clinchfield to sit, stand around and tell their stories with others. This event is part of the ongoing revitalization effort in Irwin. We're optimistic that Clinchfield Christmas is the first step in incorporating our research into active results for the community's economy. From 2007 to 2011, Unicoi County was categorized as transitional in the ARC scale of economic indicators. However, in 2012, the county declined into the at-risk category and has continued as such in each year since. However, as Emily indicated, the county is taking positive steps to continue to improve its economic outlook. One of our community partners, the Economic Development Board, is taking a leading role in this and has identified that promoting cultural heritage tourism is a major goal. Through our research, interviews with workers and those affected by the clinch field, and the involvement of our community partners, we have identified nine key recommendations for the Economic Development Board to consider as it develops its strategic plan. I will highlight a few of these and the rest can be found here on the PowerPoint and in the, on our poster in the back. Uh, first, we'd recommend improved signage for the Clinchfield Railroad and a more pronounced online presence such as a Facebook and an up-to-date website. Uh, secondly, we would say that increased partnership with the Downtown Merchants Association and Irwin to promote increased cultural heritage tourism based on railroad history. We would also like to suggest increased collaboration between the towns of Irwin and Unicoi to promote their common heritage with the clinch field. We would also recommend considering the construction of a memorial for those who lost their lives working on the clinch field railroad. We want to encourage the community to continue to explore ways to bring the illustrious clinch field number one back from the BCNO Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. And finally, uh, we would recommend further collaboration with the Documenting Community Traditions classes in the future uh, to provide more data for this project. So this project has laid the foundation for future research. The passion of the people we interviewed has shown through, and we hope to keep their memories alive as well as move forward in aiding them to enjoy a sustainable economy based on their shared heritage. We would like to thank the ARC for sponsoring this program, 
our community partners, in particular Tish Oldham, director of the Unicoi County Economic Development Board, Martha Irwin, curator of the Unicoi County Heritage Museum. We'd like to say thanks to Dr. Roberta Heron for doing such an exceptional job for our program and um, for this conference. And most of all, we would like to thank the community members who generously shared their stories with us. And I'll leave you with a quote from Martha Irwin herself. The railroad is very important to me in my heart and mind because the railroad is very close to me because this town was founded on the railroad. Thank you.